Now we look at an example from chemistry. Suppose we have a reaction that's occurring. We have uh, one molecule of a product C is formed from one molecule of a reactant A and one molecule of a reactant B. And suppose the initial concentrations of A and B have a common value of A moles per liter. Then the concentration of this product C is given by this function of T. Here A, as you can see above, that's the original concentration of our reactants A and B. K, it's just some constant, some constant depending on the reaction itself. What are the reactants, temperature, all, all that stuff can come into play and that determines our constant K. So for us, wherever we see a K, just some constant. And T is our time. And notice time isn't given any units in this question. If I'm going to refer to it, um, maybe I'll say T is in seconds. Just in case I need to refer to it later on in terms of determining units. I could say in terms of unit time, but it might be nice just to refer to it in terms of seconds. Find the rate of reaction at time t. Okay, what does that mean? Rate of reaction. Well, here's our equation that tells us how our product, concentration of our product is being formed as the reaction goes on. What is the rate of reaction? The rate of reaction is just the derivative of that concentration. So we're going to differentiate through. And in order to do this, we need to use the quotient rule. So it's the derivative of the top. Again, the variable we're differentiating with respect to is t. Everything else we're thinking of a constant. So the derivative of the top times the bottom minus the top times the derivative of the bottom all over the bottom squared. We've got an a squared k in common in both those terms, so I can factor that all the way out front. And I'm left with an a k t plus 1 minus an a k t. And all that's over a k t plus 1 squared. And so I can cancel those ones off, and that gives me an a squared k all over a k t plus 1 squared. So there is our rate of reaction. What does the next question ask? Well, it says, show that if x is the concentration of c. So in other words, just simplifying the, the variable. Instead of using square bracket capital C all the time, we can just replace it with little x. So show that if x is the concentration of c, then the derivative of x is equal to k times a minus x all squared. So it's saying that the derivative, or the rate of reaction, is related to the concentration by this formula. So how do we do that? We've already computed the derivative, that's the left-hand side. Let's go ahead and compute the right-hand side. k a minus x all squared. So that's k a minus and x is just our concentration C, so that's a squared kt, a kt plus 1. Putting things over a common denominator, we get a squared kt plus a minus a squared kt. Oh, looks like we get some cancellation in the top. So that's a squared kt. Uh, I forgot the square on that one, and then there's also the square on this one as well. I get some cancellations happening here. And so what we get is an a squared k on top and an a k t plus 1 all squared on the bottom. Does that look familiar? Oh yeah, that is exactly our rate of reaction. That's our derivative of x with respect to t. And so there we go. We have verified what we wanted to verify. Now I just want to bring up a point here. In chemistry, if you've taken a chemistry course before or currently taking one now, you probably will have seen 
an equation like this, this is a differential equation, appearing in your textbook. This is known as a second order rate equation. Now what often happens in your chemistry books is this second order rate equation is derived just through, oftentimes just through um, sort of a verbal description of possibly what the, re the reaction should be doing. So one would say maybe that, okay, we've got two products, or sorry, two reactants reacting, and they're producing a product, the concentration of the product. How is that changing? Well, it should start changing really quickly at the start, but then as the reactants start to deplete, the reaction rate should slow down. The product, which is increasing in value, should start to increase slow, more slowly and more slowly and more slowly. The reaction should get slower and slower and slower until it ceases. And that's really what this is saying. It's saying that the rate of your reaction is proportional to the difference in your original concentration of your reactants and the concentration of your product. So notice that as X increases in value, as the reaction goes on and the concentration of your product increases, this difference is getting smaller and smaller and smaller. So the reaction rate is dropping. The reaction rate is dropping. So, you know, your chemistry textbook probably gives you some, some description about how this second order rate equation is, is derived, is discovered, uh, either through, through doing experiments or through doing some thought analysis. But once that is stated, then you're left with a problem of, oh, well, okay, now I have a model for my reaction. What is the function which gives me my concentration at any given time t? Well, it would be the solution to this equation. This is a differential equation, and this is often, in lots of chemistry textbooks, is just stated as, here's the solution to this equation. So your chemistry book will just state this as a solution. It may derive it. Your chemistry textbook may say, well, starting with this differential equation, we can derive this solution, and that would be great if it did. It does involve um, some techniques from Calculus 2, so Math 152, uh, integration, for the most part, is what you need in order to do that derivation. But the point is, is that one often starts with this differential equation and then derives the solution. In this example, we're doing things a little bit different. We're starting with the solution, we're starting with the function which describes the concentration, and we're deriving the rate equation. So we're doing things backwards. And the reason we're doing it backwards here is because, well, the only tool we have is differentiation, so we can only go in this one direction. But what that means is that if you're looking at your chemistry textbook and you've come across the second order rate equation and you're wondering how did they get that as a solution, well, it's all right if you don't know how they got it as a solution. You'll see that in the next uh, calculus class. But you can verify it's a solution by doing what we just did here. Take that equation, differentiate it, see if it satisfies this equation here. And we've just done that. Now what happens to the concentration as t goes to infinity? Well, that's asking for what is the limit as t goes to infinity of this function here, a squared kt over a kt plus 1. a squared kt over a kt plus 1. And when we take the limit of this, notice it's a linear function over a linear function, so the ratio becomes well, to compute the limit, we look at the ratio of the leading coefficients, because we're going to, as t goes to infinity, and so that has a value of a. So what this means is, so the concentration of c approaches a moles per liter. And the last one is what happens to the rate of reaction as t goes to infinity. So here we're looking at the limit as t goes to infinity of the derivative of c with respect to t. So that's the limit as t goes to infinity of, and before I write this down, let's just think, what should happen? Your reaction's going on. After a really long time, what do you expect to happen? Well, the reaction should finish. Nothing more should be happening. 
So what's the rate of change in our product? Well, if the reaction's done, all our product is produced, it's not going to change anymore, so the value should be zero. And let's see if that's the case. So this is a squared k over a k t plus 1 squared. As t goes to infinity, the top's constant, the bottom has t in it, so that's getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Constant divided by something going off to infinity has a value of zero. And so, what's happening to our re reaction rate? So dc dt is approaching zero. So that's it for this example.